Welcome to another Breadcrumbs video. We're in the Psalms, we're reading through David's Psalms, and today's readings were Psalm 103, 108, 109, 110, 122, and 124. Uh, lots of Psalms to talk about. Um, I love Psalm 103, it is my actually my favorite Psalm, personally. Um, I love the ideas of God as a compassionate Father, uh, slow to anger, abounding in love, healing our diseases, uh, forgiving our sins, separating our sin and transgression from us as far as the east is from the west. Just some really beautiful words that David gives us uh, in that psalm. I also love Psalm 122, praying for the peace, prosperity, and safety of Jerusalem. Had a lot to be, be said about that psalm, but really want to direct our attention today to Psalm 110. That's where I feel the Lord wanted me to focus on the breadcrumbs. Uh, and so Psalm 110 is very interesting uh, psalm where it starts out, the Lord said to my Lord, come sit at my right hand. And we know that the Lord is talking about his son, Jesus. Jesus has ascended. He's sitting at God's right hand as the son of David. And so David is uh, telescopically prophesying about uh, the ministry and the calling and the office of Jesus. In fact, the psalm goes on to say, you will be a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. And so Melchizedek comes up in three places in the scriptures. Uh, one is in Genesis. We meet Melchizedek. His name is Melech Zedok. It means the king of righteousness, and he rules a place called Salem, or it's the place of peace. And so it's a precursor to Jerusalem. Uh, so we have a king of righteousness who rules Salem, or peace. Uh, he shows up after Abraham rescues Lot from some bandits. Abraham tithes 10% of what uh, the, the spoils of that battle gave Abraham. He gives 10% of that to uh, Melchizedek. And then they share a covenant meal. In fact, this is the first time in the scriptures where bread and wine are shared between two parties. And so Melchizedek and Abraham enjoy a covenant meal together. Uh, and then we don't hear from Melchizedek again until this psalm, Psalm 110. And then we hear about Melchizedek again in the letter to the Hebrews in chapter 7. Uh, the author goes into some descriptions about the ministry of Melchizedek and who this person is. Many scholars believe that Melchizedek is a pre-incarnate appearance of Christ himself. Um, I believe that myself. i uh, not going to be dogmatic about it. But um, regardless, there's this new priesthood that Jesus is the high priest and he's a priest forever in this order. And so as the administration of the new covenant comes into focus, this is part of the glory of Jesus. This is part of the, the author's uh, point in the letter to the Hebrews. Uh, he, he or she wrote that letter. We're not sure. There's people who don't know who all wrote that letter. M most people believe it was Paul. Um, I'm not sure uh, 100%. But whoever the author was, foremost in their mind was writing to encourage and exhort Jewish believers in Christ not to go back uh, and give up their new faith in Christ to go back to uh, the old covenant. They were being persecuted. They were being they were losing family members. They were being um, discriminated against. And so the the letter to the Hebrews is to encourage Jewish believers in particular uh, at that time to stay true to Christ. And so the the rationale throughout the letter is that we've been given. A better covenant. There's a better blood because it's the spotless blood of the lamb. It's no longer the blood of bulls and goats. We have a better high priest, Jesus. Uh, and this order of Melchizedek is a superior priesthood to the Aaronic priesthood. And so here we have in Psalm 110, just this, uh, this beautiful moment where this is where Jesus and Melchizedek get tied together uh, from a theological perspective. And it's interesting that it's King David, you know, Jesus is the son of David, and how this psalm really kind of brings these two entities together uh, as one. And uh, I like to think about that meal that Abraham was having with Melchizedek, uh, and how they're sharing this amazing meal. Abraham's the, the father of the faith. Um, God had said, through you, Abraham, all the families of the earth are going to be blessed. And so the, the gospel was preached to Abraham. In fact, if you go a little further into the letter of Hebrews, it says Abraham was longing for the city not made by the hands of man, but by the hands of God, the new Jerusalem. You know, And so he had met Melchizedek, uh, this king of righteousness who rules 
the place of peace. And so Abraham had this vision of really Jesus and the completed, the consummation of the kingdom of God. And so it's uh, throughout all of the scripture, God's plan is made manifest to us. Uh, and so this psalm is a beautiful tie-in. It's a beautiful uh, call back to who Melchizedek is, and it is, is a beautiful uh, pointing us towards the future of the ultimate consummation we're going to enjoy in the kingdom of God with uh, Jesus as our high priest in the order of Melchizedek. So um, hope you guys are having a great week and are enjoying our journey through the Psalms. And uh, God bless you. We'll talk to you on Monday.